expert, an expert panel who has not only researched the topic, but they have experienced intimacy with God for themselves. So our panel this evening is our brother Will Mosley, brother Franklin Mosley, sister Eunice, myself, and I'm forgetting somebody. And I'm a little nervous, so forgive me. Brother Ed. And Brother Ed Flemister. And as you see on the screen, our topic is intimacy with God. So first we would like to begin with what exactly is intimacy with God? Before we go into intimacy with God, let's talk a little bit about the definition of intimacy. What exactly is intimacy? Intimacy is what we call the experience of really knowing and being known by another person. It has nothing to do with sitting next to a person, being in the same room as a person, but it has more to do with a relationship with a person. You can be in the same room with someone and you could see the same person in the office every day and not know them intimately because you don't have a relationship with them. So intimacy is really knowing someone and being known by them. They know you and you know them. You know things about them. You know what they like, what they don't like. You have had experiences with them and that causes intimacy. An intimate friend is someone we feel very close to. They know us at a deep level. Intimacy with God is the same way. We want to experience God and know about him and we want him to know about us. Even though he formed us and made us, he wants us to talk to him, to listen to him, to spend time with him, to draw close to him. And that is hope. what we pray this lesson this evening would help show us the different steps of what it is to be intimate with God, how we can be intimate with God, why do we need intimacy with God? So we pray that you will be blessed by this teaching. And we're gonna have our sister Eunice help us with the next portion of intimacy with God. Praise the Lord, everyone. So before we go any further in our our anxiousness, we were we are a little nervous. Um, we're just gonna just pause and just have a word of prayer. Yes, uh, so that I we did can, forget. Um, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We just were all in this together. So we're gonna bow our heads and just just take a moment and ask God to open up the eyes of our understanding. Precious Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for bringing us together like-minded believers desiring to know more about you and we pray that as we take time to learn about what intimacy with you looks like that you will bless each heart bless the words bless the the just our our being together bless our our coming together and be glorified in all that we do and all that we say we pray this in the precious precious name of jesus amen amen so the heart of intimacy, the, the root of intimacy, where do we begin when we start talking about int intimacy? And at the crux of it, at the heart of it is trust. When you have a relationship that is int intimate, you feel comfortable enough to tell that individual 
to share with that individual, with that person, things that you wouldn't tell anyone else. So to use Sister Rose's example, the person that you sit next to in the office and you, you work together for the last 20 years, um, you might even go to lunch with them occasionally. Uh, maybe even drop them at the top. But well, that doesn't mean you trust them. So when you talk about knowing somebody and having a, like a real relationship with them, it's the heart of, the, at the heart of it is trust. So when you start to trust somebody, you give them a little bit more information. You trust them to let them know maybe where you live at, how you grew up. You just give them a little bit more and you, you, you kind of test the waters in a relationship. And, and the word of God gives us uh, an incredible picture of God. He, Nahum tells us that the Lord is good. He's a refuge in times of trouble. And he cares for those who trust him, who trust in him, um, as one, one version of the scripture tells us. So what it's saying is that God appreciates, he cares for those who trust him in the good times and trust him in the bad times. And the more we trust God, the more intimately we come to know him. For example, I trusted God to get me through junior high school. You know what? When I start my next level of education, I think I can trust him for that. I trust him, did him when I was unemployed. And he really came through for me. You know what? I'm going to take him into my confidence and tell him, this job is not working for me. Can, you, can we talk about that? And, the, and we get to share more of our concerns, more of our, our, our challenges, because he's, he's trustworthy. Sometimes in relationships, we share intimate things, and unfortunately, it's shared. But God is a friend who, when we tell him the things that are on our hearts, it's a safe place. We don't have to, as Christians, have a superficial relationship with God. We can trust him totally. And the more we trust him, the more we will experience a deeper relationship with him. So surfacely, there are people who just know that God is good and he's a good God and he's a faithful God, but they don't know him for whatever reason in times of trouble. So there's a trust factor that's missing there. So trust is at the heart of intimacy. The more we trust God, the more he'll be our go-to. The more we trust God, the more we'll talk to him. The more we trust God, the more we'll spend time with him. Intimacy is relational. Trust is at the heart of intimacy. So our next slide says, well, why do I need intimacy? So I'm going to start talking because I don't, the slide will come up eventually. So why do I need intimacy with God? So that's, that's, a, that's an important, important question. Well, you want to have intimacy with God because if not, then it's a superficial relationship. 
It's like a relationship where you say, oh, I really know so-and-so really well. And then you say, well, what's their birthday? And you're like, mm, I don't know that. What's their favorite color? Oh, I don't know that. Um, where were they born? Hmm. I don't, I don't know that. So sometimes you think you, you, you know a person, but when you really consider it, it's superficial. So you don't want to have a superficial, we don't want to have a superficial relationship with God. Because the more intimate we are with God, the more empowering it is with us. And as the slide says, in our, uh, in everyday living, um, and it's the source of, of power and, and, and peace. So it's not that God, is not, God does not need to get to know us. You got that? God does not need to get to know us. Because the word of God tells us that before the world were formed, he knew us. However, he desires for us to know him as well. The apostle James tells us, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The more we seek him, the more we strive to learn about him, the closer he draws for us, draws to us. And the more we trust him, the more we will trust him. And the more intimate we, we are with him, the benefits of what we can expect from that relationships are amazing. We want to understand that when we have an intimate relationship with God, we can just be ourselves. And that's a good thing. You don't have to put on any ears. No, you don't have to dress it up. You don't have to put a bow on it. You can come to him just as you are. We can be ourselves. We don't have to be concerned about being misunderstood or he's gonna think less of me when I tell him this. He's gonna be so disappointed when I tell him that. The relationship that God wants to have with us is one that we can turn to him in the good times, in the bad times, when we're fearful, when we're disappointed, when we're happy, when we're filled with joy, when we're filled with, sor filled with sorrow. He wants to, he wants for us to experience him fully. And I don't wanna jump ahead because we're gonna have some in uh, incredible um, examples of what it looks like when we have that intimate relationship. You know what that person and brings, brings to the table. If you trust somebody and you're intimate with them, you know their strengths, you know their weaknesses. So if I'm intimately connected to God, I don't only know him as a provider, I also know him as a protector. But that's because you get to know more about the person as you spend time with them. So it sounds like a like a like a, a no-brainer. So 
why wouldn't I want to uh, be intimate with God? What's the roadblock? What's hindering me from being intimate with God? What's hindering us from being intimate with God? And as the next slide says, it's a mindset. It's how I think. What's the thought process? Are my thoughts anxious? And the scripture reference, I'm going to pause for the, for the slide to catch up. So the first one is um, anxious. Oh, you went too far, Rosa. You want to go back. So anxious thoughts. Because it's intimacy with God. As the slide says, mindset matters. So if I have anxious thoughts, this is what anxious thought looks like. God doesn't care. I have to do it all alone. It's all on me. You're just an anxious, like worried, overwhelmed. Or my, my, my doubtful thoughts are saying, I don't know if God is real. I think I better put my um, trust in people or things or money or I don't, I don't know if I really want to pull all that weight on God. I, I, I don't know if he could handle this. I don't know if his, his, his um, bank account could, could handle it. I, I, I think I better call in for some outside resources. Um, and then there are the bitter thoughts. God is disappointed. He's unfair. I mean, I, I, I put my trust in him and, and look where I'm at. Look what I'm experiencing. I'm afraid. God, it's too hard. I, I have to protect myself. I can't meet his expectation. And these are, these are the, the, the mindsets that impact the child of God who is not flourishing, enjoying the, um, an intimate relationship with God. Uh, God's going to punish me. Um, he's going to be so disappointed that I didn't, I didn't come up to, to the mark. I don't really want to talk to him now. I'm going to avoid God. And all of those factors, whether, however the mind is playing tricks on us, those are factors that make us say, um, or make one say, um, I don't know if I can have an intimate relationship with God because I don't think he understands me. Sometimes I don't understand him. But look to the scriptures, look to the word of God. These scriptures that are that are on the screen there are powerful scriptures that will give us insight, give us insight on how we can overcome, um, as one one um wrote, writer wrote, the, the battlefield of the mind. The battlefield of the mind. So that that kind of wraps up the what hinders us from having an intimate relationship with God. So now what we're going to do is, um, what does it look like? What does the, an intimate relationship with God look like? So uh, Brother Frank will take it from here. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll give a, a quick testimony before uh, we share a portion of uh, a sermon by Dr. Uh, uh, Tony Evans, um, as far as the the walk, the intimacy walk with God in my personal life through this time, um, as Sister Eunice and Sister Rosa had, has pointed out, sometimes, you know, when you think of intimacy, you think of intimacy, be, you know, in man. And sometimes, you know, with man, there's an ulterior motive, um, as Sister Eunice shared that sometimes that information that you give the other person that you're intimate with gets, uh, gets shared or th there's a trust issue. But with God, um, as you draw closer and the barriers are coming down, um, 
it's so wonderful that he doesn't make you feel bad or, or, or uh, as man would, would, would do, you know, oh, you know, I, I see past that barrier. I see who you are, you know, and it's so wonderful as God, as you draw close to God and he starts to reveal himself, he starts to show you different things in your own life. And he's there to help you. Sometimes when you're, you're, you know, you're drawing closer to someone else, they start to see you and they start backing up and they get afraid of you. And I'm like, whoa, I, I don't want to mess with you. You, 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 you. I don't want to go down that road. But as you draw closer to him, he's going to help you onto that next level. And, uh, and that's, um, as, as you said, you know, this is just a, a, a baby steps that, that I've been taking in my life. And um, I, I thank God for, for this lesson that we're going over and this project that we've been on. So um, the video that uh, we're going to view, it's only a small clip of um, Dr. Tony Evans. Um, and the title of the video is Intimacy with God. And he's gonna share an experience. There's so many levels um, with, with, uh, with intimacy. And the main point he brings out in his sermon is that with spiritual intimacy, it goes on to capacity. And with capacity, it brings on authority. Um, and he's gonna explain in the small clip, um, we encourage everyone watch the entire sermon. It's only 45 minutes. Um, you're, you're gonna be blessed. I was so blessed by his, um, his sermon uh, as far as intimacy and capacity and authority. So um, Sister Rose, I don't know, can you, Allow, can I share my screen? Yes, I, I stopped sharing mine so that you can share yours. Okay, great, great. All right, let's see if we can. Uh, yes, we're going to share number one. And I'm going to play this. Here we go. Intimacy based on it. I did a crusade in. Columbia, South Carolina, at Bryce Football Stadium, the football stadium of the University of Southern California. 25,000 people are gathering for the first night of the crusade. The problem is thunderstorms are predicted and it's an open, of course, stadium. And so we gathered, the ministers and a few lay people gathered to pray before the meeting started. The prayer was led by the pastors who were the organizing committee for the event. And they prayed, Lord, we pray that you will bless our event. We pray that you'll win people to Christ. And if it's your will, we pray that you will keep the weather good. Nice, nice evangelical prayers. And of course, you know, we search in, in your will to cover our backs just in case it doesn't work out. There was a little lady, five foot two, named Linda. Never forget. Linda said, may I pray? And Linda stood up and prayed. Father, you have said in your word for us to win people to Christ. We've gathered together in unity to obey your word. We have used the resources you have provided your people to pay for this venue, to get out the message, to release your word. It would be God inconceivable that you would call us to obey you and we obey you and you control the weather to allow what you control to interfere with our obedience to your command. Mm. And therefore, based on your word, I command you to change the weather. Okay, now the preachers are looking at each other right now. 
That's what she said. I command you to change the weather. We all walk up on the platform. The sky is getting dark. It's seven o'clock. It's time for the meeting to begin. And you hear the thunder. We're told the rain showers will be here any minute. They're coming from this direction forward. What I'm getting ready to tell you is not something that somebody told me. Not something that story I heard about. I was there. My wife was there. It's starting to sprinkle just a little. The crowd is getting starting to move a little bit as we're just starting the service. Some umbrellas are starting to go up now. The MC says, brothers and sisters, let's stay as long as we can. Uh, we know it's it's supposed to rain and, and the thunderstorms are right here, but let's just go as far as we can. Little sprinkle, a gentleman opens up his umbrella, puts it over his head. He's sitting next to Linda and he puts it also over Linda's head. Linda pushes it back and says, I don't need it. I don't need it. And then to the shock of 25,000 people, the rain comes to the podium and splits. Half of the showers go around this side of the stadium. Half of the showers go around that side of the stadium. The rain comes back together again on the other end of the stadium. And the storm continues. If you don't think those folk weren't ready to hear the gospel after that, the pastors had position. The pastors had titles. The pastors had had influence. Linda had authority. She affected the meteorological positioning of nature. Because she had in her five foot two frame capacity based on emphasis and therefore could declare authority. Thank, thank you, uh, Sister Rosa. I'm going to turn it back over to you. Um, so that's just a preview of um, intimacy leading on to capacity and then also leading on to authority. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brother Franklin. So how do I develop intimacy with God? What are some of the things that I can do, practical steps that I can take to develop this personal relationship with God so that not only, we already know that he knows us intimately, but so that we get to know him intimately so that we can have that relationship with him. So these are just a few tips. There are many other things and for different people, it means different things. But so the, these are just a few practical steps that we would like to share with you this evening on how we can develop intimacy with God. Communicate with him, talk to God, spend time in his presence. There's many different ways that people communicate with God. Sometimes it's done through song. Sometimes it's done through worship. Sometimes it's done through praise. Sometimes it's done by sitting quietly before him. Sometimes it's done, some people write love letters to Jesus. There's many different ways that you communicate. However your unique way is, how, whatever your communication style is, do that. Spend time communicating with him. Spend time not only reading the word of God, but meditating on it. Memorize scripture. Spend time reading his word. Choose a Bible verse and think about it throughout the week. Try to gain more understanding. Research a Bible topic, 
These are all different ways that we can meditate on his word. His word was provided for us so that we can get to know him better. So we need to spend time not only reading his word, but processing it, absorbing it, chewing it like the cow does, where he chews grass and then regurgitates it back. Share the word with other people. These are all ways that we can spend time meditating on the word of God that helps enhance our relationship with God. When you are in a relationship with someone, you think about them all the time. You, you think about things that they say. As we spend time in his word, he will reveal his word to us. He will reveal himself to us. Learn to listen to the voice of God. When you have a conversation with someone, you don't want the person to be the one that does all the talking. You want them to also listen to what you have to say. When we come to God in prayer, or as we speak to him throughout our day, we don't just want to talk, 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 talk. We also want to take time to stop and listen and see what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. Sometimes we may hear an audible voice. Sometimes it may be just a thought that he puts in our mind. Sometimes it's something that you just feel in your heart. Sometimes he might speak to us through his word. There are many different ways that God speaks to us. We just need to take the time to stop and listen to the voice of God. And last, but definitely not least, learn to pray. All these things that we talked about, they all can be incorporated into prayer. Prayer, again, everyone has their own way of praying. It's not prayers that are just um, like typed up or like that you find in a book, although for some people it is. But when we have an intimate relationship with God, we don't want to just quote like, um, like we, we just want to be able to talk to God and pray to him freely with our own voice, with our own heart, letting him know what's in our heart, let being honest and truthful with him and just laying before him and speaking to him. These are all practical steps that we can take to develop our intimacy with God. So Sister Rosa, before you give the concluding slide, yes. I would just like to um, just pause for a moment and thank everyone for joining us this evening, friends and families, um, uh, anyone who's joined us that uh, this is, we, we hope that you're being blessed by this. Welcome to our, our Victory Project series. Um, the first session being the in, uh, intimacy with God. And so just before Rosa is gonna just wrap it up, um, Tony Evans, uh, Dr. Tony Evans gives an incredible, like a three minute scenario of, um, and he, 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 he explains to us that we will get out of our relationship what we put in. And it's it's a uh, when you hear the exp when you when um, Frank shares this um, this piece of the uh, the video it's it's crystal clear, and I think that it's going to help us starting tonight. How much am I willing to invest in a relationship with God? What I put in is what I'm going to get out. Brother Frank. Because God will only give you as much of him as you can handle. God is not going to waste God on you. A little boy one day tripped and fell into a barrel of molasses. And when he stuck out his tongue and saw where he had fallen, he said, God, please make my capacity equal to this opportunity. God will only let you experience 
as much God as he knows you can handle. God will not waste God. If you take a thimble to the Pacific Ocean and dip it, you will get a thimble worth of Pacific. But you won't get more than a thimble worth. Not because the Pacific can't give you more, it's because you can't handle more. Because all you got is a thimble. Well, if you bring a glass to the Pacific Ocean and dip it, you'll get a glass worth of Pacific, but you won't get more than a glass. You'll get more than a thimble, but you won't get more than a glass, not because the Pacific can't give you more, you just can't hold more. <laughs> if you bring a bucket to the Pacific and dip it, you will get a bucket full of Pacific, but you won't get more than a bucket. You'll get more than a thimble and more than a glass, but once that bucket is full, your capacity is finished and the Pacific is of no use to you. If you bring a barrel to the Pacific and you dip it, it will be full to the top of the barrel, but you won't get more than a barrel because your capacity will only receive what it's designed to hold. You'll get more than a thimble, more than a glass, more than a bucket, but you won't get more than a barrel. If you bring a tanker to the Pacific, <laughs> the Pacific can handle it. It'll fill up your tanker. And you'll get more than a thimble and more than a glass and more than a bucket and more than a barrel, but you won't get more than a tanker. Because once it's full, it's full. You see, the Pacific is big enough to handle whatever you bring to it. But it's the size of what you bring that will determine how much Pacific you get. The, the point that we were making before Brother Frank came on, the more we, the closer we get to God, the more of God we will, we will gain. And I think um, Dr. Tony Evans painted a, an incredible, incredible picture. And um, because we're at different stages, some of us have a thimble, a thimble-sized relationship. And some of us have a glassful. But no matter how close we get, we can always get closer. Because about, about how close can you get to God? How close is too close? He invites us. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. It's a relationship that goes on and on and on. So I know Sister Rosa wants to ask for questions or comments before she gave the conclusion. Yes, please. If anyone has any questions or comments, if they could just unmute themselves and um, go ahead and and share share with us. I have a question. Um, first of all, I want to thank the panel for this amazing, wonderful um, Bible study. It has truly been a blessing to me. So thank you so much. Well prepared and well presented. Um, but I have a question. If I have um, a thimble and I want to get to the barrel, um, or if, you know, can you give some insight on that? If I have, if I have a thimble, and I'm just, and I, but I want to get a barrel so I get more of the Pacific, more of God? Well, for starters, I believe um, Dr. Tony Evans mentioned that God will not give us more than what is our capacity. But the more we want of him, the more we're gonna try to draw, just like he was making the analogy of the Pacific Ocean. So if we want a little bit of him, we'll bring our little thimble and we'll just get just enough. Or if we want to have more, we might bring a cup. So I think it's, I think it also isn't, um, it's a process. 
it's a process. In the beginning, as we just start to know God, but the more we seek him, the more we get to know him, the more he reveals to us. And then it increases our hunger. It increases our desire to get to know more. But it's a process. You're not going to start out with the barrel. You're not just going to, you know, just try everything. And also, it's not, um, it's not just about like book knowledge, for instance. It's not just about, okay, I'm going to read every book on philosophy. I'm going to take every course um, on evangelism. It's more than just that. You know, on theology, it's more than just that. It's, it's really about the relationship. And some of the, and some of the some of the our fears are you know we can be our own worst enemy the things that hinder us a lot of times come from, from within ourselves our own doubts does doubt really does God really care is he really interested in my life and that goes back to the trust mm -hmm. as well thank you so much beautiful answer okay Mr. see no I was just going to say that the slide that you prepared um the practical steps I can take, you know, when you want to learn more about a person, you read their bibliography, you read their story, and, you know, you talk to them, you get to know, like, um, why's and why not. So spending time talking to God and 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 reading about him in, in, in the word of God and listening to what he's saying and, and learning to pray, all of those are, and there's other ways, we just named these few, but well, one one. Uh, author write, you know, journal about it, write, write down what he told you, what you told him, and did he answer you, and did he respond, and how long did he respond, and all of those things make the relationship more and more intimate, but you can't say you've been intimate with somebody and say, like, well, when's the last time you spoke to them, and you, like, say, like, let me see, today's Thursday, what year is it, oh, I think I spoke to them two years ago, that's not really intimate, but somebody that you're intimate with, you know, you talk to them on a regular basis. You, you're very connected. You think about the people that you have an intimate relationship with. You send in them a text in the morning, send them a text in the afternoon, finding out you just spoke to them and you and you're talking to them and get ready. Like, don't y'all live together? <laughs> okay, so you, you never, because the relationship is, is connected. And so when we talk about a relationship with God, then it's like, how much time have I spent with him? And sometimes it's a, it's a thimble sized relationship. You know, I, I, I speak to him, but well, not bad, about three times a year, Easter, Christmas, and, and Good Friday. But if you want to take it to another level, you might want to spend a little bit more time. We might want to spend some more time, so. Mr. Rosa? She's going to wrap it up unless there's any more comments. So again, we wanna thank everyone for joining us this evening. We pray that you have been blessed with this Bible study. I know that I was blessed, I learned a lot. So I pray that you were as well. So just in summary, trust and believe. It's all about trusting God and believing him. The key to experiencing intimacy with God is trusting and believing. This is revealed clearly to us in the Bible. Trust him. We put our trust in all of his precious and very great promises. Amen. Believe. Have faith. God is impressed with our faith, not our feet. It's not so much about what we do, but it's so much about how much we trust and believe him. And that concludes our Bible study for this evening. Again, thank you for joining us. We pray that you were blessed. Thank you to our panel. Brother Frank, Brother Ed, Brother Will, and Sister Eunice.
Thank you so much, everyone. Have a blessed evening.